Hello everybody, this is Mateo, and oh hey Professor Oak. Yes, I am back in town. This is after I have completed... What? After I catch more? Professor Oak, I've caught all 151! <sighs> Apparently hasn't seen that. Okay, so we're back here again. I now have the required amount of Pokemon in order to continue on here. And this is after fighting the Elite Four and the Champion, by the way. So the levels and stuff are going to be different from the last video, and... Well, we're going to be going back to the Sevi Islands. But you need at least 60 Pokemon for this. And I had already caught all the Pokemon that you could catch in the game, and then I just evolved some of them in order to get this. And now he's going to give you this. However, Lavier is going to show up yet again. Apparently he's done being the champion, except not. And, well, I technically am the champion, but apparently while I'm gone or whatever, he's going to take my champion spot again. Because no matter what, he will always be the champion waiting for you at the very end, and that's how it always works in Pokemon. Even though you beat the champion, they're still considered a champion, and you have to fight them every single time. But yeah, now we have to fill up the Pokedex of all 386 Pokemon. And there are a lot of Johto Pokemon that can be caught in this game. Especially, well, mainly, ac actually, entirely on the islands. Uh, so you can go check out those areas, see what you can find. You'll find about half of them, a little more, a little less, maybe. And then, uh, you can, uh, catch them. And then the other half or so, or most of them, is actually found in Emerald, Ruby, and Sapphire. <clears throat> and then you can trade them over from one game or the other, and then that's how you'll be able to get your at least near 386. However, I'm not going to be catching all 386. Mainly because half of them can't even be caught in this game. I don't care that much, and it's just going to be a lot of trading otherwise. Uh, so really, this is just going to be a walkthrough of all the uh, island stuff. Uh, following a more... Uh, more of a run-through of one island. We just kind of glanced here to talk to Celio and Bill. But now we're actually going to explore what this place has to offer. And I think you all will find it kind of interesting. However, like I said, we do have hi much higher level Pokemon. I think everybody was around like 40, 45 na earlier. Now they're in the mid-50s. And these are basically the levels that I beat the Elite Four with. Which I think is alright. And we have just a whole bunch of water Pokemon, so Pikachu's going to go ahead and have a field day with this. And there we go, we beat Abigail. Yay, we are awful, except we won, so that makes you awfuler than the all awful person. Okay, and she's just hanging out on this little island, never to leave. A amazing, she's going to die of starvation, except not, because she's an NPC. Also, where am I going? There we go. I wouldn't really trust Slowbro to surf me around just because he's so lazy and out of shape, but oh well, apparently he can support my weight, and look at all these rocks. We haven't seen anything like this before, but, well, we'll find out what to do against them later on. And here we have a Picnicker who's going to have some normal and types and stuff. We're not going to be seeing any new Pokemon used by the trainers until 4 Island through 7 Island. They don't give any trainers new Pokemon in these first three because you can go to these before you complete the game, before you get the national decks. And they didn't want you seeing any new Pokemon until you got the national decks. So for now it's going to be the same old, same old. But afterwards we will be seeing a whole bunch of new guys and it will be exciting. Also, High Jump Kick, kind of risky, has, I think, 90% accuracy, and if you fail to hit your target, uh, you take, I think it's 50% of your health off, so you miss twice, you're basically dead if you don't heal. Uh, but I'm, I'd like to think that I'm rather lucky, or, or at least it's just not, it doesn't miss as much as it probably should, uh, because I almost never miss High Jump Kick. Or any lower accuracy moves for that matter. I mean, seriously, like, I use High Jump Kick 50 times, I'll probably miss it, like, I don't know, 3 times, maybe? Some, somewhere around there. That's about 90%, actually. Oh, well. <laughs> Excuse me. And they, this person has Eradicate, but it's not shiny. 
Oh, too bad the shiny Raticate's not going to get very much screen time at all because it's a very low level, and I'm not the biggest fan of normal types, and I'm not the biggest fan of Raticate. Raticate's just kind of there for me. I just know that he exists, and that's about it. And it's just... I don't really want to use any new Pokemon. I thought about using a new Johto Pokemon or two, replace some of my old Pokemon, but I just decided against it because that would require a lot of training to get them up to high level. And a project this short just really wasn't worth putting in that much time to train, especially since I already have to level grind quite a bit for the ending of this, which we'll see that when we see that. But here we have a fighter girl, has a bunch of fighting types, which means Psychic from a Slowbro will take them down easily, especially since they're under-leveled. You're probably actually supposed to go this to this area once you were doing, after you talked to Celio and Bill, and you got the quest to give the, the guy the meteorite, and then you could go here and completely not do what you were supposed to. But I'm doing it later just because I wanted to get that all done in a single video. And it took 20 minutes uh, without doing this stuff. So, yeah, just didn't want to get into this area as well. That and I, um, I kind of completely forgot about it, to be quite honest. I haven't played Sevi Islands that much. But here we have a swimmer, guy. So guess what Pokemon he's going to have? A shelter and other water types. Which means Pikachu will fit right at home. Yay, Pikachu. And Cloyster, I believe, is the Pokemon that has very high defense and high special defense, which is why I sent Hitmonlee out and, oh, shoot. Also, when the Pokemon protects or whatever, it, it would be bad. Also, it's almost 50%, not entirely 50%. Actually, that was more like a third. So, pay no attention to this guy who can't do math, but then again, it's summer, so I don't have to do math. Here's a War Total. That's pretty awesome. I always think it's really cool when a po a person uses a starter Pokemon or one of the evolutions. Also, that War Turtle is actually looking kind of purple, where, whereas usually War Turtle is seen as a bluish type Pokemon. That actually kind of reminds me. I was doing a Pokemon Emerald Randomizer race with my girlfriend, Christina, and I found a Dratini in the Victory Road, and it looked purple, and I'm like, Oh sweet, a purple Dratini, it's shiny. And thinking that, hey, Dratini's usually a, like a bluish Pokemon, this one's purple, it must be shiny, and I wasn't really paying attention, so I wasn't paying attention as to whether the sparkles would show up or not. Uh, so I was just like, oh cool, a shiny, and I didn't want to kill it, so I used my Master Ball on it, which was okay because we weren't allowed to use, like, the level 70 Rickways in the certain place or whatnot, uh, just because they weren't random. So I used my Master Ball on it because I wasn't going to use it on anything else. I pretty much had my team already set. And, well, it was not shiny. It turns out Dratini, for whatever reason, is a purplish color in Emerald. And it's actually a pink... Its shiny color is actually like a pink. So, that was just awesome. Just the purplish looking War Total rem reminded me of that. Also, if this were any future game in the series, that would have been a double battle, but this game still has not implemented the whole two trainers see you at once, you get double battle. Also, yay for the help screen popping up again because I accidentally pressed the L or R button because my finger slips. And it does that sometimes, but oh well. But there we go, we beat Shia, I think his name was, I don't know. All the black belts and the fighter type people have the strangest names, and by strangest names I mean they're not English. <laughs> That's so mean of me. Oh, uh, well. it's They just have different names, I guess I should have said. Oh, well. Your face doesn't look all that smooth. And I'd also rather not step inside of a hot spring with a bunch of old people. So I think I'm just going to come in here for what I came in here for. Talking to this guy. He broke these boulders with his hands, even though he could have used this item that he's using that he had, that he gave us, gave them to some of his Pokemon and have them do it. And be lazy. But no, he did it by himself. So, now that's kind of interesting. So 
So let's go ahead and open our TM case. Check out Rock Smash. It is a new HM that we need to use in order to progress through some areas. We're going to go ahead and give that to Pikachu because he's not going to be learning very many other moves that I would want to use. So a lack of a single move slot is not that uh, bad. And I'm not a huge fan of using HM slaves just because then I don't have one of my teammates with me and it'll take forever. And I need to switch everybody out every once in a while and whatnot. It's just annoying. I'd rather keep everybody in my team with me at once. But with Rock Smash, we can break these rocks. So yay for breaking rocks. And also sometimes there will be Pokemon inside of them. Usually a Geodude, maybe a Graveler. Usually you can just run from them. Like, oh hey, looky here. This is an example. And guess what? It is a Geodude at level 10. So we can go ahead and just run away from that guy. And pay him no mind. And we can continue on for the third rock, and then we can get this item, which I believe it's a TM, maybe? Ether. Never mind. Uh, pay no attention to this fool. We will continue on instead. So, we are coming up here. I believe I battled that girl. No, I didn't. Okay. You just completely skipped her for a minute. Okay, so what does she have? It's another fighter girl. Okay, it's just the black belts. The crush girls have... English names. I mean, like, I remember in Pokemon Emerald, there's this one guy named Knob, and I think there's another guy named, like, Lung. I think they're just named after body parts, where they'd probably punch you if they had the chance. Because apparently humans have knobs. Maybe he was just so angry that he punched a door, and, or, and hit it in the knob and broke it or something. Maybe it's just where they'd punch. I don't know. Either way, we can, uh, surf again to head to another little island bit. And we have more water trainers, which means Pikachu will feel even more at home. Now if I could actually decide as to what I wanted to do, which is in fact to put Pikachu up front, that would be fantastic. Also, Flareon and Dugtrio are kind of becoming underleveled here compared to the rest of the team. Because the just the, the whole bunch of water trainers, uh, both fire and ground are weak to water, Excuse me, so they really don't have much of a chance at all to do much of anything. Right now, it's just kind of been Pikachu and Slowbro, and that's about it. And, well, Dugong's good against a lot of things, but right now is not one of those times. So, I forgot to speed this battle up. But I did remember to put the music in. So, we have the original game audio going along with the song that I put in, so it won't be just, like, no noise whatsoever. So basically, the song is going two times at the same time. And one of them is, like, three seconds behind the other. That is fantastic. I'm just going to let you listen to my screw-up for a second while I go turn on the fan, because it's really freaking hot in here. So, be right back. So much professionality. Okay, I didn't forget to do it this time, so hopefully that doesn't happen too much. I mean, that would be kind of awful. I mean, it wasn't that bad, but still, it was just ridiculous. And this guy has a whole bunch of Goldeens. At least it's not a whole bunch of Magikarps. Like, every, uh, every game has that one trainer guy, that one fisherman with six Magikarps. And I don't think, you know, a slam would not take a Sea King down. Its evolved form has too much stats for Pikachu to handle in a single slam. But two slams, however, that will take it down. And we have yet another Sea King, so have I learned my lesson? I have indeed. Let's go for the super effective move and take it down really quickly. And well, yet another Sea King. Okay, so that was actually a bit more interesting, and then just using Thunder for no apparent reason, maybe because I was running out of Thunderbolt or something. I don't know what my reasoning was behind that. But hey, it still hit, so we can continue on now, yay. And pass this guy, and up this mountain. Well, we can't see that it's a mountain yet, but... Uh, we were told about Mount Ember, I think, and if not, well then... Mount Ember. Yeah, see? Well, I didn't really show off the... See, now you can see it. It's all burning and steamy and stuff. And this guy... This guy teaches you explosion. 
and none of my Pokemon can learn it, but Explosion, at least until 5th gen, was an incredibly devastating move. Especially if you were near- your Pokemon was near dead. You just explode and pretty much guarantee a kill against the Pokemon that you were fighting against unless they were like four times resistant and super defensive as well. That was really the only way that you'd be able to not kill the Pokemon you were fighting. So, yeah. Really powerful, although it does cost the life of your Pokemon. Really not good for the main story, but for the comp competitive battlings or whatever, uh, very good. At least until Gen 5, which is what most people are playing now because it has all the new stuff and whatnot. But, oh well. You, if you play 3rd Gen still, really good move. Although, why am I telling you this? If you're playing 3rd Gen, you probably, you probably already know that. Oh well, this... Pokemon Ranger is all about saving nature and whatnot, and yet she's sending flowers out against me only to be burned. I mean, really, if she wanted to save nature, she would uh, not send out the flowers to be burned. She would save them, but alas, no. And then she's just going to stand there forever and let her flowers be dead slash fainted, whatever. So, since we have Rock Smash, we can, take, we can take a bit of a shortcut here and not have to go through that grass. And then just walk around here. And a bit of a maze we got going here, but not really all too bad. We have a dire hit over here. I thought it was something else, but apparently not. And then we also have that battle, that crush girl over there that I think I'm going to go battle maybe. Oh, nope, not going to. Going around in another circle. There's the explosion guy again. Just probably thinking to himself, what has he done? Created such a terrible move known as explosion. Okay, and that... Okay, random teleporting... Crush Girl, awesome. Uh, well, I don't think of a... Well, yes, I definitely have mentioned it before, but I haven't mentioned it in this project, for those of you who are new. Basically, whenever an Avi recording, at least for Visual Boy Advance, uh, becomes over 2.00 gigabytes, the file will just crash, and then it, I just can't use it. So, about after every, like, 10 minutes or so, I have to create a new file. Stop recording for a second, create a new file, start recording again. So if you ever see somebody teleport, that's why I had to go and create a new file, because I, ge I was getting up there on time, and we can't go up there. Hopefully there's another way to go, that's where the dire hit was, because I want to see what's at the top of this mountain. Oh, hello there, guy. You saw me from afar, and I really couldn't dodge you whatsoever, although I really don't want to. I'm trying to fight as many trainers as I can, just because makes training a whole lot easier, and I want to show as many battles as I can. Because, what if you're playing through and you want to see- or you're not playing through, you want to see the action. Or the Pokemon battles. Well, here you go. Execute an Executor, two Grass Psychic types, a really weird type combination. I mean, some people say that Gen 5 has really weird type combinations like, um, I don't know, Dark Steel in the form of Ponyard and Bisharp. But then, my response is that every generation has had its, uh, strange type combinations. I mean, Polyrath is water fighting, and we have exec ex the Execute line, which is Grass Psychic. Those are two odd lines that you really don't see together a whole lot. And I like it when they put two weird types together, like Psychic Fighting, to get Meta Titan Metacham. It's always really neat, and just adds more variety to the game rather than just having a whole bunch of bug flying and um, water ice, all these usual combinations, ground rock, great example. Okay, so we have a bit of a rock and a rock smash and strength puzzle here. Really shouldn't be all too bad though. I mean, you should be able to solve this, it's incredibly easy, and if not then I'm going to show you how. We're almost- we are really getting up there on time. 20 minute video. The videos will get shorter from here. I just wanted to go all the way up this mountain in this video. And oh my god, it's a Pokemon battle against another Geodude. And it's at level 9. It's just getting worse and worse. Next time we find it, it'll be at level 8. And then we'll really be screwed. Except not. So let's just go up here. We got the Firestone. That's what I thought I was getting the last time. But- uh, or you could just buy them. But, you know, whatever. And here we have yet another fire s or, uh, strength puzzle that we need to solve. And at the top of this mountain, 
we find Moltres. He is no longer in Victory Road. Instead, he is here. And I will see you all next time. Goodbye.